Bubble sort is a great example of a sorting algorithm with a really important trade-off. Let's start with how it works. So what happens with bubble sort is that we are going to compare pairs of elements, and if they're out of order, we're going to swap them. So we start always at the left, and so we're going to compare 8 and 2, and they're out of order, so we swap them. Then we're going to move along one spot, and we're going to compare 8 and 3, and they're out of order, so we're going to swap them. Then compare 8 and 1, out of order, swap. 8 and 7, out of order, swap. 8 and 5, out of order, so we swap them. At that point, we've made it to the end of the array. We call that one pass, and then we go, end up going back to the beginning, and we do the whole process again. So we compare that pair. They're not out of order, so there'll be no swap. Out of order, so they'll swap. Out of order, so they'll swap. Or sorry, not out of order, so they won't swap. Out of order, so they'll swap. And then the last pair is not out of order, so they won't swap. We've made it to our second pass of the array is now finished, so now we go back to the beginning and we start again. They're out of order, so they swap. Not out of order, no swap. Not out of order, no swap. Not out of order, so there's no swap. Not out of order, so there's no swap. And bubble sort would then stop. Once it's made it through its third pass of the array in this particular instance, everything is in order, so it would stop sorting. I've made another video that, that traces bubble sort by hand um, on paper. I'd recommend you watch it. Bubble sort is one that people have trouble tracing. Its name comes from they think it's like bubbles rising in a bottle of pop. So the bubble rises up to the top. That's like the light elements floating to the front of the array and the heavy elements are sinking to the bottom. Bubble sort's characteristics are that it has a whole lot of swaps. Bubble sort's known for that. It makes that slow inching up the array with the pairs of elements. In the general case, it's very slow. It's order n squared. In fact, it's slower than uh, selection sort because of all those swaps it makes. Selection sort makes far fewer swaps. But its best case, and this is what's important, is if the array is almost sorted, so it's not in random order, perhaps it's uh, you've just added one person to the array, then it's a very fast algorithm and it's close to order n. That's really fast. Okay, so the trade-off is this. In the general case, it's one of the slowest sorts. So if you have a completely random array that you don't know anything about, it's going to probably be very slow. Bubble sort's method of swapping one by one up the array takes forever. However, when the array is almost sorted, it's a sort, it's, a, um, it's an algorithm that can stop early. And that slow method where it compares pairs of elements going up the array is also how we check if an array is sorted. So inherent in that slow process of comparing pairs is also the possibility that we can stop early. So a very interesting trade-off. And in fact, that slow comparing pairs method is pretty much the only algorithm we have for testing if something's in sorted order. Yeah. Yeah. I like this graphic. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> All right. So the code looks like this. So we have two loops, that's where the n squared comes from, and you can see right in here we've got our three-line swap. I hope that you're starting to recognize it now. And then what's happening in this if statement that's above it is we're saying if the one that's after it, so j plus 1, is bigger than j, or smaller than j, then that means that they're in the wrong order, because the one that's after it should be bigger. So if they're in the wrong order, then we're going to swap them. Then the other loop we've got here is to go down the array once. And then this other loop is to go back and do it again. <laughs> so this code in here inside the first loop is one pass of the array. And then the other loop is what makes it repeat over and over again for the other passes of the array. Okay, good luck with your sheet.